Well, I gotta ask this. I've seen this question previously. With like the interwar small airframes or practically biplanes, mm -hmm. can you put a level four engine on them and uh, definitely be the fastest airplane alive? A level four engine, yes. Jet engines, no. Uh, very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It was very early uh, identified as sort of immersion problems yeah. in this in this feature, and uh, we actually, uh, yeah, uh, adjusted it so you can't put jet engines on biplanes. Oh, so unfortunate, not having yes. a little jet engine on a biplane uh. flying around. Welcome back guys, I'm now joined by Gabriel Blum here, he's our content design lead and I thought you'd talk a little about what you do here on Bible Alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been here on the stream before, yeah. it's just been a couple of years. Um, yeah, I've been a um, content design lead for By Blood Alone. I've since stepped down. Now I'm a senior content designer. Um, and my uh, my job for By Blood Alone was to make the plane designer. Yeah, and I thought we're actually going to take a look at that right now. Yes. So we load into lovely Italy here. Yes. And we're going to start talking a little bit about the plane designer. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, you, you access it much the same way that you access the... Uh, the tank designer and the ship designer, so you go into your production screen. And as you can see, there are already quite a few historical uh, planes set up, uh, and you can create variants. And as you can see, the, the SM-79 fans of Italy will know it as the torpedo bomber. Um, allows you to drop torpedoes into bombing. Uh, has three engines and two light defense guns and um, we can add more weapons to it for example if we want to make it better at um, doing close air support we can uh, let it carry additional bombs um, and the uh, the actual stats as of course you saw uh, see here currently says zero we're still looking into how best to represent this because the actual stats are mission specific so you get plus nine ground attack if you do close air support missions because you have uh, the bombs and the bomb bay and um, so if you don't do close air support obviously they wouldn't load the bombs so for example you wouldn't be carrying that uh, weight you don't have the same agility penalty and stuff like this um, so for example for strategic bombing you only get plus six but you don't get uh, a penalty to agility um, and there are two new stats, uh, thrust and weight, so you need to be, um, you have enough thrust that's uh, created by your engines to actually take off, and uh, all the stuff you put on a plane adds weight, and if you have more weight than you have thrust, then uh, the plane can't take off. And if we just... cheat a little bit, we can actually have to save it and go, let's build this thing instead. And um, so the the way you get these modules is through research, uh, much like with the tank designer. Uh, and as you can see, I forgot to put in the, the right art here. Uh, so stuff is still being ordered, um, art is still coming in for this. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you research these airframes, which are the things that you can then put modules on, and then you have the modules here. But for example, you also have other modules that you get in other trees, like for example, mechanical computing gives you bomb sites, which uh, helps with strategic bombing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, actually the balance between the two systems. As mm. the the previous old system, we see a lot of matter regarding you know going for fighter two, going for fighter three, that sort mm. of thing. And how would that be more represented in this area? I mean, you still have the um, the airframes, and uh, researching newer and better airframes is the only way that you can really increase uh, agility of your fighters. So, uh, agility is more of a budget. Uh, you have a maximum value for the airframe, and then if you put um, modules on it, the agility value goes down. And if you look at like the Fighter 2, Fighter 3 meta, um, that is primarily because you want to get more agility because it is frankly a bit of an overpowered stat in the 
in the combat system as it stands. Yeah. Uh, we are also looking into that. I'm not going to make any promises uh, about how that's going to shake out, but it, the role of agility in air combat is something that we look at. Um, so you still want to, you know, have modern airframes, but um, one thing that you have a lot more impact on um, and control over is speed, because that's determined by the engine, and the engine is, is independent. So, for example, if you do research newer engines, you can up-engine an older airframe and make it a bit more competitive that way. Um, so I, th I hope that um, there will be less tech rushing um, and more sort of, you know, making bigger jumps uh, closer to the, the time uh, that it was historically researched. Yes, yeah, so a bit of a more variety in what people yes. do, a little bit more like historically and like you don't see, you know, perhaps the 1944 things in 39. Yeah, you know, that, would be, that would be nice. And also, I mean, you can still sort of use the older stuff for things that don't need to have great agility, like your, yeah. your naval bombers. I don't know how much people care about their agility when they're out doing naval bombing, right? And uh, if, if the only thing you're facing is um, enemy medium bombers, for example, they also don't need to be super um, agile. So you can take an older airframe, make it a bit cheaper, put a modern engine on it, put some good guns on it, and then you have a very capable interceptor that doesn't cost you as much. Yeah, but I gotta ask, as I've seen the thrust in previously, with like the interwar small airframes, or pr practically biplanes, mm -hmm. can you put a level 4 engine on them and uh, basically be the fastest airplane alive? A level 4 engine, yes. Jet engines, no. Uh, very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was It was very early uh, identified as one of the um, sort of immersion problems yeah. in this in this feature, and uh, we actually uh, yeah, uh, adjusted it so you can't put jet engines on biplanes. Oh, so unfortunate to not have yes. a little jet engine on a biplane uh. flying around. Yes, out of curiosity, can you make a six jet engine, like large airframe, faster than normal fighters? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> as, as I do see the question there, what's, what's <coughs> the new fighter meta? And I have to say this, let's talk for you guys to decide. I, I don't know what the meta w will be, like, as a lot of things are changing. Yeah. So I think the meta will, there won't really be an out-of-the-gate meta, I think. No, it's, it's always sort of the interesting bit is like, uh, I mean, obviously we have our testers that play the game and uh, there was definitely a meta with the with the uh, QA department, which was uh, surprisingly like offensive heavy. Like they they just maxed out uh, offensive po firepower. Yeah. Um, s people are sort of arguing, you know, back and forth of like, okay, but uh, just putting a lot of guns on it means the the planes get shut down very quickly. Do you don't you do uh, then uh, lose more IC than if you made them more survivable? And people try to find sort of the sweet spots of like how much survivability can I fit into my weight budget um, versus how much offensive firepower do I can get in that weight budget um, and how do I uh, balance that. And obviously people first try out sort of the m maximum settings on that scale, yeah. right? Like all guns or all armor and like two light guns. Um, and I think... Um, the the all guns fighter won that match up completely unsurprisingly um and i also hope that um the meta will be slightly different for different countries yeah. so if you're a small country or medium country like for example romania uh it makes more sense i think to make a multi role fighter that um that uh, can do uh, uh more different things so it's not just a fight it can also support ground units it can uh, for example carry a torpedo so you have a, a naval bomber that can sort of work as a fighter in a pinch uh, and obviously if you optimize a design towards just being a fighter or just being a naval bomber it's going to be better at that yeah. but you lose that flexibility yeah. so for countries that have a limited industrial base having these multi-role fighters might be the best choice because it gives them a lot of flexibility and a lot of bang for for their buck but if you're a country like the us that can afford to you know spend 
20, 30, 50 factories just on building pure fighters, yeah. that might be your best approach. Uh, and I'm definitely interested in where the community sort of lands with that. Yeah, no, like, for me, I just feel like, okay, there are three, there are three fighters that I'm going to start with, like, three planes. I have a glass cannon mm. that will shoot and annihilate everything, but will die by um, a bird. Mm. Then we have the fortress that tanks can't even shoot down at that point. It's just, it's just armor. Mm. And then we have the fastest plane alive. Um, you just it's swishing around. It has no guns, but it's very fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also just a tree, free... Charge plans. But yeah, so it's really going to be really interesting to see what the community comes up with, what weird designs is going to end up becoming the comes up new meta. But I saw the question like the memeiest thing that QA have done, like for example, like the memeiest plane this plane that they've done. Uh, so it took us a while to get the limitations on uh, planes or on, on um, engines <laughs> for size uh, yeah. working. So people were building fighters with like six engines and going like, wow, I have a lot of weight budget to, to play around with. So let's all maximum guns. So for a while, a heavy fighter with six, six engines was the fighter meta yeah. uh, in, in internal testing. It's not, um, it's not possible anymore. So you have a shot. How do the new planes interact with nukes? Um, so the nuke interaction is basically just do you have a strategic bomber uh, air wing in range, do you have air superiority on this, so on, then you have uh, a button that you can press. We thought about making it a special module, like a nuke adapted bomb bay, that you had to put on uh, a, a heavy bomber before they could um, drop nukes, yeah. but we decided ultimately against that. Yeah, so the, so as long as you can have a heavy airframe and it can strategic bomb, you yes. can then drop nukes like normally. Yeah, and okay. I guess you also need the nuke. Yeah, yeah, you might also need the nuke, you can't spawn them out of thin air. What's your favorite historical plane, and can you remake it right now? I have a lot of planes that I'm uh, very fond of in, in various ways. Um, I think you can make most of them. Yeah. Um, there are a couple that um, I find very funny, but which I couldn't really find a reason for to make in uh, make it possible through the plane designer. Like for example, what's called a turret fighter. Like um, yeah. that was an idea the British had uh, early in the war, which was you just take a small plane, you put one of these defensive towers uh, on it as if it was a bomber and it's just gonna fly alongside the bombers and shoot it down with the turret so you don't need to you know maneuver wildly uh, the plane doesn't need to be super nimble because uh, the the tower the turret can can turn um, didn't work very well um, mm. and I decided that okay I want the player to be able to put defense turrets on um, on small airframes yeah. but I don't want them to be able to just make planes that um, only have defense turrets. So, um, sorry for all the uh, Bolton Defiant fans out there. It's not really possible. Yeah, unfortunately, there, there are things that have limits. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where, yes, we could probably change the entire system to allow for planes like that to exist, but much like in history, they wouldn't be good ideas. And at some point, you need to acknowledge that um, players have. Uh, you know, hindsight or foreknowledge, I guess, of so what's a good idea and what isn't, and either you change um, the system to a point where that f you know hindsight doesn't really get them anything, uh, which isn't particularly immersive, uh, or you go like, okay, so making it, you know spending resources on making a system to allow the player to make very bad choices is maybe not a good use of resources if there are other things that you could be doing. So s things like that, um, like these uh, turret fighters, are just one of those things that um, sound fun if you don't have to make the system. Yeah. Uh, but I see another question here of, uh, is it possible to create historically accurate planes? I mean, depends on how accurate you want to be. Yeah. There are definitely a lot of... Uh, historically accurate-ish in, in uh, game terms um, 
uh, planes already when the game starts. And I think it does, um, the system does a pretty good job of representing sort of the differences. Um, but it is, um, if you, if you want to make like uh, a fighter that has all the features of a specific historical one, that might be difficult. Yeah, no, it is really the hard to make everything you have in historical, yeah. like in other generation names. And it also actually defeats the purpose of having it to a sort of designer for the player to yeah. make it themselves. Because it's no longer, as, as in the previous system, you had the pre register in what they are. Mm. So I believe, you know, the UK had Spitfire, for example. Mm. But now it's not the re pre registered. You know, they you have the how they look, but, you know, your own plane, maybe you want to name it Spitfire 2.0, mm. but have six engines and a bunch of guns <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not like the most historical spitfire but <laughs> it's all about what a player can imagine and create in with the innovation can you show us the new ui system in f3 f3 is add air i believe right yeah it is there yeah sure we can take it just open it up so it's not you know <laughs> it doesn't not, look super <laughs> yeah, it's just different. a small a few smaller changes you won't like you will see the air roof yeah. so that's pretty much it but uh, yeah, um, yeah, there's like now a 100 uh, maximum amount, so I had to go through all of the OBs for all the countries and make sure there were no air wings running around with more than 100 planes in them. Yeah, no, it's, the uh, air rework is a really interesting thing, and uh, Robert covered it like really extensively about right. how you do it. But like, I, you know, air groups, I love it straight. It's mm. so much more fun. Like. With By Blood Alone, it's really increasing the immersiveness of the game with, you know, Divisional Command, Air, uh, air Rework, the Plane Designer, Balance of Power, a lot of more things coming around. Well, there, there are a lot of new air zones, actually. Yes. Like, uh, it's one of the things we did. Um, so, for example, Arabia used to be one air zone. Um, Ethiopia, or I think it was called East Africa, used yeah. to be one air zone. Um, I think um, India used to be three air zones. Yeah, yeah three or it's four. Now it's a couple a lot more, more now. Um, Indochina was split up. I did another pass over um, China. So that was also changed. Uh, and we also went through like all of Siberia. And sure, some of these are pretty, still pretty big, but I mean, it's it's northern Siberia. Come on now. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff in uh, in Canada, for example, and I think yeah we also went through. Yeah, there, there's Europe. a lot of uh, new air zones, and I think it's gonna make it a lot more a little bit more accurate than you know. I'm gonna place one fighter here. It's gonna cover this in, this entire like geographical <laughs> place. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it was also a question of like punishing countries for their geography in a way. Like if yeah. you only reach. Like this tiny slice of uh, of an air zone, uh, but you can sort of get around by just uh, dumping gigantic amounts of planes in there, yeah. um, and and things like that. Uh, so what we wanted was to uh, have smaller regions where you could actually feel like if you uh, base planes inside the region, then um, you can actually cover the entire thing and get actual. 100% efficiency. Yeah. We're also looking at the time, they're very, very getting close to the clock. And I just wanted to thank you so much for actually coming aboard and joining me. It was really fun having you join, you know, for the playing designer. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be really fun when you just get a hand of it. And like with that, you know, we have social media. So if you want to stay up to date on, you know, a developer diary or just other content that we're releasing, you know, keep following us there. You know, there's also the Discord that is growing and it's a really fun play to play multiplayer. And as you know, pre-order just released this Tuesday, and you can now pre-order and receive the Bella Show song, which is a total, it's just an amazing song. It's just perfect.